So you can either draw the basic shape by hand, or I did make a template which you can download for free at thewoodlandelf.com slash pattern slash Chewbacca. You just want to tape the three pieces together and then cut them out. So you should have this. And then you just want to trace that onto a cardboard box. You'll end up cutting out four pieces of that out of the cardboard box. And then on the template where the dotted lines are, you want to cut that out on two of the pieces. So you'll just cut out the little rectangle. It doesn't have to be very deep, just a little bit. And then you just cut it off and use that one to measure the second piece so that you get two notches of the exact same size. And then you want to take those two and you'll use those on the inside so you'll sandwich those between the two pieces that are not cut out. So you'll end up with a little hole there. So just take those two pieces and you want to take some regular glue. I'm just using some tacky glue. And you want to put that around a lot of the gun but not quite the full thing. You want to fill in the open spaces with hot glue. Um, the reason I'm not doing it all the way is because the hot glue dries too fast to cover the entire thing. So you'll just use a mix of the two glues. And then you just glue the two pieces together and sandwich those in between the other two, doing the same thing, just gluing all the pieces together. So you should have a crossbow that's four pieces thick now. And so initially I just hot glued a bunch of paper strips all the way around the outside to cover up the corrugated cardboard. And then I just took an X-Acto knife and I cut off the paper so it was even with the cardboard. But then the light bulb went off and I had a much better idea. Um, I just took some electrical tape because it's the perfect width and you just go around all that so you can use that instead of the paper and glue method. Um, like I used it on the inside here. You just run it around all the corrugated cardboard and it covers it up and gives it a nice smooth finish. And then of course you want to leave the little hole open because you'll be using that. So then get yourself a piece of cardstock and you just want to roll it around a pencil. And then you just drop the pencil out, pull a little hot glue along the edge, and then just stick it onto itself. So you got a nice little hollow cylinder there. So then you'll just stick one end of that in that hole, and you'll just hot glue it to the crossbow on either end. So then take a little cardstock rectangle, put a little bit of hot glue in the very bottom of it in the center, and you'll just stick that on the edge of the cylinder, just like that. And I'm going to have some help from the sacred Kesha cat, but um, you just want to take a little bit of craft foam, heat it up so you get that bow shape, and then you're just going to stick that in the opening and hot glue that in place. It's a little flimsy, but we'll be hardening it up later, so just hot glue that in place right at the edge there. Cat pulling on it is optional. So then get two ping pong balls and two tiny little pieces of craft foam. And you just want to glue one piece of craft foam to each of the ping pong balls. And the reason you do this is because foam sticks to foam better than it sticks to plastic. So you want a bigger piece of foam for it to stick to. So then you can just hot glue. And then you'll just hot glue those onto the ends of your bowed piece of foam. And it's a little bit flimsy now, but again, I'll be fixing that later. So don't worry about it if it's bendy. It's alright. So then take another piece of cardstock, and you're going to roll this one lengthwise this time. So roll it up around a pencil, just like you did before. Then drop the pencil out, and put some glue on the edge. So you'll make two cylinders like that. And then you'll take another piece of cardstock and cut it thinner than the other two. And then just roll that around a pencil. Make yourself a third cylinder. And you want to make sure that this one is a little bit bigger than the other two height-wise. So then just take four pieces of corrugated cardboard, just little squares, and you're just going to stick two of them on one of the cylinders, one on one end and one on the other. And then you'll put a little bit more hot glue right on those. And then you'll just glue that to the bigger cylinder. And then you'll do the same thing with the third one, putting the pieces of cardboard one on the top, and then one on the bottom, and then you'll put some more glue on the pieces of cardboard themselves, and hot glue those right to the other two cylinders, making sure that the bigger one is in the middle. So you have your little three cylinders glued together, and so to make them look a little bit more like scopes, you just want to take a piece of craft foam, just a little rectangle, put some hot glue on it, and then you'll just wrap those around your cylinders to give them a little bit more 
dimension, different heights, make them look a little more like scopes. So you can see I got two pieces in the middle, a little bigger, and then one on each end of the smaller cylinders. So then take two rectangles and hot glue those onto the bottom of your set of cylinders. And then you're just going to make a stack of cardboard. So take four squares and just glue them together. And then you just hot glue your little stack of squares right onto one of those other pieces of cardboard. And you'll do the same thing on the other end. So you should have two little pillars of cardboard basically. And so then you'll just put some more hot glue on the bottom of those and then you'll hot glue that right onto the top of the crossbow, right on the top ridge. And that should set right on there. And then to make it a little more stable, just take some more rectangles of the corrugated cardboard and just glue those on either side of the stack. And that will make them nice and firm so that you can move it around without worrying about the scopes falling off. So then get yourself a couple of twist ties. And just take one of the twist ties and wrap it around a pencil wrap the entire thing. I'm using some extra long twist ties here. You just want to wrap it around a pencil until you got the whole thing wrapped. And then just slide it off and you'll spread it out a little bit to get a little more space in between there. You want to do that with two of them. So then go over to your crossbow and drill a hole a little bit below the scopes. Put some hot glue on one end of your little twist tie and then push the end of that into that hole. And then you're going to pull it around, and you'll make another hole on the back side of the crossbow there. And then you'll do the same thing, put a little bit of hot glue on the end of your twist tie. And then you'll just push that right into that hole that you just made. And then you'll do the same thing on the other side of the crossbow with the second twist tie. So you get one on each side there. And so then you just want to pop some buttons on there. You want to arrange them to be the dials of Chewy's crossbow. You just hot glue all those in place. You can also glue one up on the scope. And then of course you do the same thing on the other side. Use a bunch of different assorted buttons to make them look like different size dials for different functions. And so then in the back end of the crossbow you just want to drill a hole, and take some wreath wire and slip it through there and wrap it around itself a few times. It'll make a little loop that you can hang um, a strap off of. You can do the same thing on the front end of it. And so then take some regular Elmer's type glue and you just want to coat the entire thing with a coating of glue and then you let it dry and you'll coat it again. You want to get about six coats in all. And what that does is that'll harden everything up. You can see that the bowed part of the crossbow is a lot harder now. But even so I'm just going to take, I took a piece of cardboard and I just hot glued it to the edges of that just to help hold it in place exactly the way I want it. This is not actually on the bow caster, but I did it for stability reasons. And so then here is what you should have so far. This is the full construction of the bow caster. And then you just want to give it a coating of black paint all over the entire thing. And then you want to take some metallic silver paint. Actually, I'm using gunmetal gray here, but some kind of metallic silverish paint. And you want to go around the edges of all the buttons to make it look like the dials are worn. Um, you can see the other side here, because in the movie they were quite worn. So you can just attach your strap to your loops if you want to. I'm actually not going to, but that's what those loops are for. Can I try that? I like this thing.